So before I leave you with much smarter folks than I am, uh, I'd like to give you an update on the state of the community. Um, it's been you know, two fantastic years, albeit you know, we were apart. Um, so much has changed. I see many new faces here. So I figured uh, giving you an update and some you know, plugs to some of the conversations that we're going to be having today uh, might be useful. So um, as John mentioned, since the last time we were here, uh, the foundation has grown drastically from a membership standpoint and from a support uh, standpoint. I think last time I was here on this stage, we had 26 members uh, supporting the foundation. So in the last two years, we have doubled the number of our members. Um, you know, when I look at this slide, I'm very proud not only to see, you know, the financial institutions that founded us uh, six years ago continue to be, uh, you know, the core group of support and, you know, adding more and more representation from uh, the global uh, uh, largest financial institutions, but we've added so much support from technology organizations, uh, fintech uh, firms, and a uh, big development in the last year, uh, uh, John hinted to ISDA, um, you know, we've been starting working with industry consortia. This is an, in this is an industry that has been, you know, uh, familiar with open standardization efforts uh, through trade association and consortia. And I think the very exciting part here is um, we are now recognized as an open source enabler for the whole industry. Uh, we want to collaborate with existing consortia. We want to make sure that we can accelerate their standardization process and through open source bring, you know, the standards to life, bring the standards to the hands of developers uh, so that they could be adopted much faster and much more effectively. Um, and so in the last year, uh, we added 17 new members. If you're counting well, there's only 12 logos up there. Uh, and so I'm very excited to announce today that we uh, are adding five new members uh, to our representation, um, starting from our associate members, uh, the EDM Council, ISLA and Mojolup, three uh, very different trade associations, organizations focused on data compliance, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, lending, and financial inclusion. Again, we have an opportunity to make a difference through open source in accelerating uh, uh, pan-industry uh, progress on so many areas, we think. Um, we want to welcome Synecron as uh, uh, our uh, uh, sorry, silver member, uh, and then White Source, who's uh, been a long-standing contributor to the foundation as a gold member and i'm very excited those of you who were here for the members meeting yesterday to also welcome uh, bank of montreal as a uh, platinum member of the foundation and welcome back actually kim prado to our uh, governing board uh, she's our former vice chair and a, another great leader and supporter of the foundation but we're not measured in revenue we are a non-profit uh, and the great news is that over the last two years, we have grown across pretty much any dimension. Um, um, you know, as I said, we passed uh, 50 members. Uh, we have uh, now reached almost 50 between projects and special interest groups. Um, we have reached about a thousand, over a thousand contributors over time. Uh, from where we started around uh, an Italian uh, dinner in Palo Alto, that's pretty outstanding, we think. And of course, our team has grown. I, I wish, you know, I hope today you'll meet uh, all the new faces in the Finos team and, of course, the Linux Foundation extended team that we're now part of. Um, fortunately, I don't have a slide comparing to 2019, but a lot of our growth uh, really started in 2020. Uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, as John said, from 2016 to 2018, we were the Symphony Software Foundation. Symphony has been uh, always a great uh, component of our growth. Uh, but since we launched Finos in 2018, um, you know, for two years, our contributions were mainly coming from vendors. As you would expect, uh, um, this is an industry that uh, you know, takes some time to start contributing. Um, but it's been with 2020 that, as John hinted before, 
we started seeing massive contributions from financial institutions. Not only Legend, not only Morphir, but we've had contributions from original intellectual property from uh, Citi, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, and several other institutions in our foundation. And so, you know, while I would love to take credit of it, and I certainly will take a little bit, uh, I think the Finas team did a great job in enabling this industry, um, you know, the pandemic has also accelerated this process. Uh, and so we are now, today, looking at eight of our top eight contributors coming from financial institutions. Um, this is pretty unprecedented. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, talking to some of my fellow leaders at the Linux Foundation, um, you know, contributions from banks are pretty rare, uh, used to be pretty rare. And so we think uh, that what Finos is enabling is not only valuable for the industry, but also for the broader open source community at large. It is an industry that has been leading uh, in technology, and now we have the opportunity of influencing uh, upstream components that the whole world depends on. John mentioned OpenSSF, a very important software supply chain securing effort uh, by the Linux Foundation that is now uh, you know, participated from the largest technology companies and now financial institutions in the world. Um, what we are seeing is really an industry that is living what I would say an open source awakening. Uh, this is an industry that has been consuming open source forever, but it's an industry that has now realized that in order to take full value out of open source, you need to be contributing. Um, and the reason is mostly innovation. These are stats from our state of open source and financial services uh, survey that we produced with partners and the Linux Foundation research. Um, if you look at that number, 84% of our respondents understands the strategic value of open source to drive innovation. This is on par with other industries. And so the why is pretty clear now. And the areas of collaboration are very aligned to what we are doing as a foundation. I'm going to give you a couple of bits, tidbits today, but hopefully you're going to hear much more today uh, through our sessions. Uh, and even upstream, uh, as I said, there's so much uh, potential for this industry to influence the broader open source ecosystem. Um, I'm not going to go through all the highlights of 2021 because, frankly, there's been so much going on. Um, but not only we've added new members, a project or a special interest group has been added to the foundation pretty much at the once a month pace this year. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to engage. Um, We've launched trainings. We've integrated with the Linux Foundation LFX platform for managing our growth and for you to be able to monitor that growth from your organization. Um, so much has happened this year, and I hope today gives you a, a really good sense of how far we've come in the last uh, three years since we got launched. I want to touch on a couple of projects just to tee up some of the conversations, because it's not just about the new projects. It's important to make sure that we continue. Part of our role is to foster success of existing projects. So FDC3, probably many of you are familiar with it, is our desktop interoperability standard. Um, this year released the 1.2 version. Uh, we just announced a free training yesterday. This is a big uh, uh, you know, plus of being part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, uh, Go check it out. This is really for both business and technical audience. So really understand why you would, would you want to uh, you know, buy into an open standard for interoperability. And finally, you know, we're bringing the standards to the developer. Uh, uh, the FTC3 workbench gives us an actually really powerful way of developing applications. Um, again, it's an actual piece of code that helps you build FTC3 compliant apps. So our standards are maturing. Uh, uh, very much like our software projects. Um, John touched on Legend. Legend is uh, a logical data modeling platform. Uh, uh, it's been now evaluated or used in several firms. And I think the key point I want to make on this slide is uh, um, something that really uh, changed our perspective. We are also hosting the Legend platform uh, to support collaboration in our projects. So you can actually go to finos.org slash legend and get access to it. 
that has enabled us uh, through our financial object, special interest group, our collaboration with ISDA, to invite not only technical folks to collaborate in the open, but you know, a public, an audience of business users, data modelers. That really means that anyone in the organization can participate to open source communities and open source collaboration. Um, there's much more than code to open source. Um, so I hope you hear a lot today. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot today about Legend. I'd love uh, you know, to hear your feedback. So come, come and hit us up. Um, another strategic initiative that we developed uh, in the last uh, two years is our Open RegTech initiative, which we run with our associate member, AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation. Um, in fact, today you're going to be hearing it from uh, Joanne and Sultan, uh, the head of innovation of the FDIC. Um, we think there is a huge opportunity in collaborating in the open on regulatory implementation, uh, whether you're a financial institution or a fintech. Uh, you know, there is a huge potential for mutualization there. Um, but in the long run, we hope uh, uh, regulators will start partaking to the open collaborative process. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, writing uh, open source regulation at a certain point. Hopefully, before my kids grow, <laughs> grow old. Um, <laughs> so on this note, uh, we announced last week an exciting partnership with the EDM Council on their cloud data management capability initiative to really create an end-to-end open source cloud compliance uh, suite. Um, come and talk to us. We're actively recruiting maintainers for these projects. We think there is a huge potential here to deliver uh, you know, transparent and fully open source proof of uh, regulatory compliance for your cloud deployments. Um, so as you've seen, uh, um, whilst most of our collaborations start out of the technology organization in these in this firms, uh, you know, for the values that I think we're now mostly familiar with, you know, attracting talent, increasing efficiency, reducing the you know, vendor lock-in and risk in your strategic technology investments. As you hopefully have seen from sort of a sample of our initiatives, the value that we are able to deliver through open source is uh, um, up-leveling. It's moving towards the business. We are enabling uh, you know, faster uh, response to client demand, better interaction with regulators, collaboration with your peers. Um, and we're starting to see um, actually firms leveraging open source uh, on a truly strategic level. Uh, uh, you know, I argue that open source should be a technology pillar very much like cloud. And we're seeing some firms you know, really adopting big tech uh, list cap secret, which is open source. Um, so I hope to see more of that in the next couple of years. And as we continue uh, to up-level uh, the, the value that we deliver, um, the uh, open source readiness and the maturity of the firms, it's key to unlock that value. And so uh, you know, we will continue investing in that area, which has been really how we got here. Um, just to give you an, an extent as to where we are from an open source readiness standpoint, again, these are stats from our state of open source in financial services. Whilst most firms have a consumption policy, I would say it's about time, we still have a huge way to go from the standpoint of structuring your governance through an open source program office, and most importantly, uh, um, having a clear strategic communication and lines of, uh, you know, uh, clear lines of communication within the organization when it comes to driving open source from really the C-suite level. And so uh, um, I hope that uh, you get, you're going to have a great time today. Um, I hope this last uh, uh, two years, uh, you know, being apart uh, uh, certainly didn't seem to have stopped our momentum. Uh, but as we have talked a lot on the corporate value of open source, I want to close on a, on a different note. Um, an interesting finding uh, in our survey was that, you know, ultimately 
has proven that communities are made of individuals. Um, um, you know, there's a lot of individual motivators for collaborating in the open. And, and you know, you are here not just because it's you know valuable for your firm, but because it's fun, because uh, they, you have a personal interest in what you're doing, because you have a passion. And so, I hope that between uh, um, you know the the value that your organization can have, whether you are a fintech or a, or a uh, uh, financial institution, whether you are a regulator, uh, or whether you're just an individual that is passionate about solving problems in the industry, uh, or you're a user of the financial system, or a developer trying to get its new job, we think there is a huge value for you, and we hope that today you're going to be able uh, to discover that, uh, because we think open source is a positive sum game. It's not just good for you, but it's good for the whole industry. So. Thank you so much for being here and we hope you will enjoy the day.